So here's what we're talking about today. Yeah. We're going to figure out, ready Priyanka, we're going to figure yeah. out what can we learn about real estate from either toddlers or pets. Right. Right. So we started this out, this discussion. So I'm, I'm, I'm Justice Gorski. These are our co-hosts. We have uh, Jim Godwin, who is from Kansas City. We have Priyanka Jory, who is from, can I just say the entire state of Texas, or do you specialize in one part of Texas these days? I am in Houston, but not suburb of Houston, cause the woodlands. All right, fair enough. I, I just always picture you as like t- you know, taking over all of Texas. Texas. Right? <laughs> all of Texas, all right, so, so Houston. And, and, and John Q. Patel, who is in Northern California, Silicon Valley, Bay Area. Do you, do you have a specific city these days, or no, are you kind of- Fremont and the Tri-Cities is where I'm located. All right, cool. Uh, th- better known as Fremont. Love it. So we're going to talk about uh, toddler real estate. And when I, when I think Jim might have thrown out this idea in terms of emotional gymnastics, that this is the first time you're joining us. Um, the whole idea of this series is just to, to dive into and figure out what are the ways as real estate agents we can develop our emotional intelligence? What are the ways we can learn to roll with the changes and the, the chaos of our everyday life? Right? What's, how, how do we find the calm in the middle of chaos? And uh, Jim had this idea. Jim and I both have little kids. So we're like, hey, what if we do an episode where we talk about the lessons you've learned from like toddlers and how that relates to real estate? There's so many things we could do. And then Priyanka said, what'd you say, Priyanka? I said, well, toddlers are just too much trouble. I would rather talk about dogs because they are so much easy and there's so much to learn from them. And then I sent you that meme about toddlers being terrorists because they terrorize you whole day and then Terrorizing the dogs, getting on your furniture, interrupting you d- during your day, and then during the night, they look so nice and calm, and uh, <laughs> just feel like we love them. And then you guys I'll, came back. They said toddlers have so much to teach, so I'm ready to learn. I love it. All right, so let's, more, let's just go ahead, Yeah, I think it's more also. Um, you know, dealing with toddlers and then, you know, the calm that you see after the, 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 the fussiness and the terrible twos and whatever comes on with, with the territory. But even with dogs, I mean, I've had my, my golden retriever and my American Eskimo when they have so much energy and it's like, oh my God, no, I'm tired. I just came back from work. But they're full of energy and they're full of joy and to see you and they want to play with you. I think it's the same with real estate. We can relate when buyers are really ready to go out there and start looking, right? Like, okay. All right, so, I love it. So, so, let, so let's just start there. So, so what are the lessons we can learn about real estate from toddlers or pets? You just said your buyers are like your golden retriever. Tell me more, how so? I think, I think more so um, buyers are, are very anxious, very ready to go, but they feel they don't understand the market as much as we have explained it to them. They have issues Oh, they, they feel that they don't understand the market. They feel like, oh, you know what? I can get a super deal even in this hot market, right? Um, I can totally go below asking and um, it'll be all fine. Even though John Key has said specifically, this is not that kind of market. So I think it is understanding coming from that angle of, of, of expectations, which you already have that conversation with them, but how do you nail it deep down inside more and more and more? Experience, right? They write an offer, they get rejected, write an offer, they get rejected. And it's like a toddler. It's like a, it's a, it's like a little puppy or a dog where you tell them no and they still keep going. You tell them no and you still keep going. And they're like, oh, wait, okay, this is what's gonna happen to me if I don't stop, right? And then that's an aha moment right there for a buyer. And they're like, okay, now I understand. I have to listen to her. I have to go 160,000 over asking and blah, 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 exactly what she recommends and let's get it done. So, so Jackie, on, on that note, what, do you see anything there that, um, that we can take from that as a lesson so that we don't have to go through that again the next time? Like how can we take that lesson that you just learned there and I think even if we set expectations, Jim, um, you know, setting expectations, I think it's repeated uh, acknowledgement of that expectation conversation. Mm -hmm. I think that is so mm, uh, to do for us because we can keep telling them the same thing over and over and over again. But when when is the time when you say, okay, enough is enough, I've told you this a couple of times and you haven't heard, you're not listening. When do you, when do you draw the line? So when I, so having having upfront and honest communication in the beginning. 
oh, you could have that. I've had many of those with one client. Mm -hmm. I've had a couple of times I've had that conversation with them, right? But it just doesn't sink in. And so where is the switch off at that point, right? Um, And where I had to do the switch off is where I said, okay, I'm not going to take you out to see this property unless and until da-da-da-da-da. That, that, sounds a, like, oh, no, that sounds a lot like how I talk to my two-year-old or my five-year-old. So, but, but, <laughs> but, but, but before, before you go on, Priyanka, I just, you said something that was really cool that I don't know if this came out of your brain or if you got this from somewhere, Junkie. You said, what did you say? Repeated something expectation conversation. Like, is that your own phrase? What, what, what did you say? Yes, it was my own phrase that I just came up with. It repeatedly having the same expectation conversation. Right? I love it. Um, it's the same thing you have to do with your toddler or your dog. I mean, you have to keep on saying to my my golden retriever, one thing is if he doesn't behave, spray bottle, spray bottle, spray bottle, spray bottle. Again, I'm, I, I'm, I keep saying it. If you don't behave, this is what's going to happen. Well, same thing with the buyer, right? If you don't, if you, if this house doesn't meet your requirements or you don't go at this price that I'm recommending you to go or remove all contingencies as I'm asking you to do, it's not going to work because well, my friend said this and my friend said that. Well, no, your friend is not the professional year. I am, right? So that's that's a conversation we have to continually have with our client. But isn't it depending upon their personality? Because a lot of people, and I have gone through that very recently with a client. Uh, I'm very A personality. So my thing is like, you know, here are the steps. This is how we're going to do it. You're Absolutely. hiring me because I'm a professional and listen to me, right? But then there are people that's like, yes, yes, yes. That's why we love you. We heard about you. And this is a close friend. This happened with me. And she kept making lower offers, right? So I have told her what we will be doing. Then I said, oh, I'm going to make this offer and you will see. So I wanted to teach her a lesson kind of, right? Like toddler. Okay, right. this is what you want to do. You love this house. You're going to lose it. I'm telling you. And then we lost that. And I was like, see, I told you so. But then she did it again. And then she did it again until I realized this is her personality. Yeah, saying yes to whatever I'm telling her, she kind of understands it, but she still wanna does it her way. And I pass it on to her, another realtor as like, you know, hey, this is not working out between you and me because you're not listening to me, maybe because we are friends or whatever. And I'm also not pushing you as hard as I usually do my clients. So maybe you need to have a different agent. And I pass it on to a common friend who's a realtor and they just started. I wanna see how that goes. But then I have other clients who is just like, hands off, whatever you want to do, it's your job to get me in a house. So I think you have to learn, like even with toddlers, right? You will have one kid that have one personality and other kid with a different personality. And same thing with pets. I, I thought you were trying to say that with to- it's just like with toddlers, that if it doesn't work, you just pass them on to someone else. <laughs> I <laughs> hope, right? That's why I don't have kids because I would be like, donkey, can you take over? <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be giving it to my husband here, take care of it. <laughs> And I'm like, nope. <laughs> no patience here. Right. Jim, do you have something you want to jump in on before I change gears? No, go ahead. All right, because I'm sure we're going to dive into more. Le- like, there is a lot of specific lessons we can take out of how toddlers behave, but I've got a couple of questions. So, uh, if this is the first time you're watching this emotional gymnastics, um, go ahead and type in the box if you've got any questions for us. We just we come up with a lot of topics in advance and we kind of throw out questions to spark discussion. So, this one, Priyanka was a little worried about this question, but I think it's a good one. Ready? Here's this one, guys. Are dogs better than toddlers? How I would say dogs? yes. I, uh, okay, so that is a very tricky question because we know you love dogs, right, Priyanka? We know I where this, this question is coming from, but I honestly feel, are they, be- are they better than toddlers? I mean, are we really comparing our kids to animals my kids. that's true that's true but my brother asked me this question the other day and this is so weird because he said are you really comparing my kid to your dog and i said well if he's going to behave like it yes <laughs> hey you just insulted that dog strike there <laughs> take it back <laughs> no no i mean i love our dogs right because they are pets they're my children right i i, I always tell everyone i have seven kids but in all reality, I only have two two adult children. But, you know, with my niece and my nephews and my two dogs, that's what I say. And it's it's a funny thing because it's a great question. Are our toddlers like 
our animals, our pets. I think what Jesse was asking, like, are dogs better than toddlers? I think we were talking about before we started the show, what do we learn from toddlers and what do we learn mm -hmm. from dogs that we can apply in real estate? And I think this, for me, because I rescue the older dogs, I rescue the dogs uh, that already have some kind of bad past, right? And what personally I have learned is no matter how bad things get, they always get better and they live in the moment, right? So they do something bad and I am stressed out and I'm not talking to them say, like, please go out and play outside, right? They don't hold it against me. Yeah. Like when I'm done, I go out, they love me as much as they loved before. Mm -hmm. But human on the other hand works differently, right? So when you're working with your client, what you can do with them that you do with your dogs, that will be a little different. That makes you, you know, instead of getting stressed out, I know they are not doing it on purpose, right? So that's what I have learned that when my dogs are behaving certain way, it's something in their past. This is not personal. They are needy, they are clingy because somebody has abused them. Somebody has left them outside in thunderstorms or whatever, right? So now they want to be next to me. And I have to balance that out. Like, yes, they understand that I'm busy, but if they need me right now, I need to stop what I'm doing and maybe take care of them. Just like clients, like a lot of clients, like personality wise, right? Some of the A personality is like, you know, 30 second call, like, hey, what's going on, this, and you're done. And other clients, you spend 30 minutes talking to them because that's what they need. And learning like how each client's personality is different, I think that's what makes us, you know, that's why we say like we wear so many different ha uh, hats. We are realtors, but we are also counselors because we get so involved in their personal lives because they want us to. They share so much with us. Sometimes you're just listening to that mm -hmm. and then you're reacting to what they are saying or they are doing or what they are needing. And I think that need part is something that I have learned that my different clients have different needs from me, not just the real estate, right? Like mm -hmm. how I interact with them, how much time I give them and how I answer questions. Right. So, yeah. And you know what, honestly, Jim, I agree with Priyanka on this because I just had to be a counselor. I just had to be a psychologist. And, and um, Jesse, I, I think you remember this way back when we were talking a couple, when you first started talking to me in 10 minute, li uh, 10 minute live, live um, you had asked me, how do you, what, what do you do? How do you keep sane? And at that moment, one thing that came to mind is us as humans, the, you know, as realtors, we also need the calm, right? In order to be able to deliver what we want to deliver to our clients. We're psychologists, therapists, whatever you want to call it. But at the end of the day, who's taking care of us? How do we take care of us, right? And, and, not, and not only that, and, and Jim, you might have something to add on this one. Um, I, I look at this through the frame of, I don't have a dog anymore. We have, we have kids, and I have a two-year-old and a five-year-old. And the energy that I bring to the interaction with my kids dramatically affects how my kids are. And I know this relates to clients because I've seen it happen to clients too. So yeah. let's use an example this morning, like I'm getting ready, my, I'm getting my five-year-old ready for school and he is not a fan of getting ready, not a fan of getting up. Some mornings it's amazing, some mornings not, not interested, right? Putting on his shorts and shirt is like a 10 minute, like just meditation on my patients, right? So on mornings where I'm like playful, because because I Tristan said something this morning. Tristan said, you know, kids play, that's their job. When I come from a playful way, like, all right, let's make this a game, like let's get your stuff out, right? Like the energy I bring to it, it goes pretty well, usually, right? Sometimes out of my control. But when I come to it, like, hey, we're late, we're, we're late, like get, get this done, this it, it just never goes well. And same thing with, with my clients. Like, do you find this gym that when you go to your clients, the energy you bring to them dramatically changes how the, how the interaction goes? Oh, 100 percent Hundred percent. That's why <clears throat> It, that's why I've given up um, the need to be right. Because if I, because what I've, what I've learned, you know, over 16 years of, of working with clients is that when I come to the conversation and the relationship with, you know, it, I'm right the whole time, then the, then the, the, um, the interaction, um, there's a, there's a blockage there. Like I can't, I can't, um, they, they're not listening to anything that I say and I'm not listening to anything that they say. So there's like, there's nothing, there's no communication happening there. Yeah. When I give up that need to be right, even though I know that majority of the time I'm 100% right, if I give that up and I allow the space for the communication to happen. Hold on, did, did you just say you know 100% of the time you're right? I said almost. <laughs> <laughs> so so, so, then, so, how do you give up the need to be right if you if you know you're right all the time because you probably are I'm always right right you got Jonky Priyanka you guys always right 
Yeah. Oh, so, it's so, 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 so hi, no, you're not Priyanka? No, because sometimes I'm just like, you know, okay, I misjudge this situation or misjudge this person and I need to backtrack and reevaluate the situation. And it happens and that's just learning, you know, because it's when not- you're meeting a new person that you haven't had a relationship, the first impression may not be the right impression, right? And then as you start spending more time together, especially with the buyer clients, and you're driving together and talking to them, you realize that, you know, oh, you thought that's what they need, but not really. Or if you have two people, right? Spouses coming together and you had interviewed one or who has hired you and now you're meeting the other person, you have to back to it's like, ah, oh, this is going to be a little bit different relationship, so. I mean, I, I totally agree with Bianca too. Sometimes we tend to think that we're right and we're not, you know? Um, and sometimes we have to admit the fact that we're not, right? And it's okay. Um, the other day I was talking to a realtor, uh, another realtor, and, and it's, it, you know, sometimes it's tough for you as a realtor to be in a position where you're a professional and to admit the fact that you're wrong. For sure. um, but you have to mm-hmm. do it because that's where ethics comes in. That's where integrity comes in, right? All that is part of our play too. Sure. But, but, but how, how do you let go of, so, so going back to that concept, because I will admit, I, I have a hard time letting go of being right. I really like being right. And I know it doesn't serve me all the time. But so Jim, like what, do you, or anybody, like what, what do you do to let go of that need to be right? I've, I've just been involved in so many relationships where it hasn't worked out, but I know that it just, it just doesn't work. When you, come, when you just come from a place of knowing that it doesn't work and you're not going to get what you want accomplished anyway, then what's the point? Like the thing that you want to get accomplished is clear communication and a, and a, and a healthy relationship and a good, you know, a, a transaction that works for both of you, for all parties involved. If you know that you being right doesn't allow for that to happen, then, then why do it? So there are different levels of right, right? So there's one level where it's like, you know, it's not going to hurt my client if they are making this decision. And the other level where it's like, oh, no, 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 no. I'm, I have been known to actually drag clients out of homes that they want to make offer on. And I have looked at it as like, nope, we are not making offer in this. I, I have like, done that. Right. And clients have appreciated that later. Like, But at that moment, it's like, but we have seen 30 homes and like, this is the one. And it's just like, no, because I know this investor. I know they have done that rehab and there's going to be so many problems in the South because they don't do a good job, mm-hmm. right? And at that point, I have, like, I know I'm right and I'm gonna stand my ground. But there are other situations where it's just like, you know, yeah, it's not hurting them because they're hiding me for a reason. They're hiding me to protect their interests. For me, they're two different things. So protecting their interests, if I know I'm right, I'm not giving in, right? So I have to lecture them, I have to fight with them, I have to argue with them and just like, you know, hey, this is the reason and I will just keep repeating it. And there are other ones that are just like, you know, no, no problems. Let's go and reevaluate or let's talk about it. Go, Jim. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, yeah. So just to clarify, what I'm saying that um, you, you you come from a place of not knowing that you're. What I'm saying is that like you 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 don't come from that perspective like into the conversation. I'm right, even though you know you are. That's so it, it opens up the space in your own mind to ask questions instead of demand something. So it's like so even though you know you're right and they have to see the house, be like, no, I'm going to stand up for them and this. Instead of coming from that perspective where it's a force, when you come from the place of um, not needing to be right, it's more power. Yeah. Power, right. you know, power is more you know, dominant than force. I think also bringing um, facts with you, right? Mm-hmm. Why not this home and why this home? And if Bianca is saying, you know, I just tell them, no, I know she had a fact in there. I know their investor. I know what kind of work they do. And from experience, this is how they do this, right? And so people want that honest opinion. I have I have had to tell a client a couple of times, um, you know, comparing the properties this past week. And his daughter just came in yesterday and said, oh, this home is too stuffy. College going girl, home is too stuffy. Um but your parents can afford this price range. You know, uh, the other homes are much smaller than what this home is. This home is this size. And so explaining them that angle. And again, you know, uh, and, and then of course, take, uh, and this is what I told the, the, the father yesterday. I said, oh, if she's going to be the decision maker, then she needs to be at all appointments as well. Having that honest conversation, right? I know that I've been in this industry long enough to know which area, which home 
will fit your budget, including your needs and your wants, right? So coming from that angle as well, like Priyanka said, listen, I know the investor. I know this will not match you. Let's get going. They listen. Same thing with my clients. They listen because you're honest with them, right? You're actually being right and you're being honest with them. I think that's so important for us realtors to understand and know that we're here to serve them and their needs, right? Um, coming from that angle, um, not always thinking you're right or you're wrong or whatever it might be. So that, that's where like different levels that I'm talking about. So I have learned before I used to be like, you know, I know the area, I know the budget and these are the homes. And I kept getting clients who want to see like that $500,000 home, but they qualified for 300. Mm-hmm. And, and I was like, that, that never happens. <laughs> well, it happens to me all the time. I'm right? kidding. <laughs> so what I started to do now, and it works so well, that first day or two, I assume that we are not going to find the home for them. It's just the, um, finding what they really like. So I ask them to make a list of things that they like in a house, which is always going to be higher than what they can afford in their price range home, right? So I'll take them to the homes and I don't tell them what prices are. I tell them, I take them to the homes that have all those things, let them see it, take them to the other homes that don't have all those things, but they are in their price range. I say, what do you think? And they say, oh, we love that home. Say, that home was $500,000, the two that we saw in that area. These homes are 300,000, but don't worry about it. Let's buy this one, call me in three or four years or five years, your equity is gonna go up and we're gonna go and buy those $500,000 home. You're gonna get promotion, you're gonna, you know, uh, your uh, income is gonna increase. So it doesn't have to be this right now. So you don't have to wait, don't get disappointed. We're just gonna step up. And that has solved my problem of people just getting frustrated. Like, why are you not showing the homes that I want because, and then I, me saying like, oh, you can't afford it. It's just kind of insulting. Right. You know, even if you say it in a nice way, but if you show them, right. And tell them, no, you're going to get this house one day, but right now this is what it, we are doing to step up. It just smooths it out. And it makes my life so much easy. Totally. And doing right and wrong kind of thing. I know I'm right. I know what their price range is and where they should be saying. I just think of it as an investment in a client to show them what they want and what it's going to cost them. Mm-hmm. And it, it just works better than just saying it versus showing them. Yeah, absolutely. I you love that. I've never thought of that. It's really cool. Go ahead, Jim. Yeah, you, just, you met them where you were. Yeah. 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 I love it. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to change gears for a slightly because I was thinking, I think I do something like that Priyanka with one of my kids, by the way. So bringing it back to, to Todd, the real estate and parents, I'm curious question for you guys to discuss. Does being a parent make you a better real estate agent? Um, being a parent make you, you stumped us. <laughs> I, I'm going to say the answer is no then. Is the answer no? <laughs> um, I, no not I don't right? think so. Yes or no. Go ahead. So, go ahead. I said as a pet parent, right? So I don't have toddlers. I don't have human kids. Fur babies? Yeah, my fur babies. I have learned a lot more patience. I'm still a very impatient person, but just dealing with the dogs, I have learned the patience. Like, you know, if I just let something happen, and give it for a few minutes, it's going to get better versus trying to resolve it right there and then. And same thing happens with the clients. A lot of time, I just want to tell them, right, from inside, like, no, this is not like this. And then just like, let them talk it through. Let them get it out of their system. And then I'm going to start talking and explain why not. Yeah. So. I think it has helped me personally. So patience, go ahead, Jim. I don't even know if being a parent makes you a good parent. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I honestly feel that you know being a parent of young adults versus toddlers, there's still similarities. <laughs> there's still some similarities. I mean, I, I feel that um, you know not all. Uh, I don't know. I, I guess my opinion is different on this one. And I feel that uh, in, a, in a way, I definitely agree with Priyanka as well, that sometimes um, having kids as toddlers or young adults doesn't really matter. It's it's the psychology behind it. Mm-hmm. It's the conversations you're creating around them. It's a type of relationship you want to cultivate with them, right? Wouldn't you agree? It's It's what you want to take from your your kids and kind of implement it towards your your clients 
at the same time, vice versa. I think it happens so subconsciously, like this is not a conscious effort that we do. Right. We just learn like from day to day experience, dealing with clients, dealing with toddlers or pets or whoever. I think it just forms us, right? We change every day kind right. of thing. So I think having toddlers definitely or pets definitely affect you. Well, and th this, by the way, is not for those of you watching this. This is not a advertisement to either have kids or not have kids. <laughs> there is, no, there's no value because it's it's a funny discussion. Like I have, I mean, I have young kids, so some of my friends have kids and some don't. This is not a value judgment on whether you are a better person, whether or not you've had kids, right? Priyanka and I, we always joke like she has dogs, not kids. They're, 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 which one's better doesn't matter. But but the idea is that like as you as you learn and you develop, what are the things that you have learned about yourself that you apply to your clients? And one of the things for me that always strikes me is like Priyanka said, patience, but also um, just how do you roll with different situations that come up? Real estate is such a dynamic changing thing. I have a new agent on our team who was asking a question and, uh, and they were basically asking like, you know, is it always like this? Like their first deal was like up and down. It's like, it, it's not always like this, but yes, it's always like this. Right. Like, you know, so how do you how do you explain that to someone? Like, what 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 techniques do you do anyway? Like, Jim, do you, what specific things do you do like to roll with this chaos? Um, that's a great question. Um, with with respect to how I've learned like how I've learned from my my son. Yeah. Because you guys um, have a really interesting dynamic, right? Yeah. Like, you no, it's it's definitely taught me a ton of patience, and it's taught me to. Um, to live, live in the moment more than I more than I was able to before I experienced what living in the moment meant to a to, to a two year old. Like when I watch him um, go through like go through the day, and he and he's changing emotions like constantly. And if and if I if I if he is like in a temper tantrum, and I attach to him being in a temper tantrum, in thirty seconds it's done, and he's playing with a toy, and I'm still upset that he's throwing a temper tantrum. If, if I did that with clients, that would make, that would make a long day for me. <laughs> or, or, with the, or with the other agent, like we talk about our clients, but what about interactions with other agents? In every deal, there's usually two agents. And I think it's funny because as, as adults, we tend to carry that emotional baggage with us a little longer. Like if you have a discussion with the agent on the other side, it's a little bit, gets a little heated, right? Or you just don't see eye to eye necessarily some way through a transaction. Toddlers are so able to flip it. And I feel like with, with humans, one person's carrying that emotion on when the other person might have let it go and then they feed off each other back and forth and just continues on longer than it needs to. Did you guys find that? Yeah, totally. It happens. Totally. Yeah. It happens. Same, yeah. Go same ahead. thing with like toddlers and dogs when we were comparing before that they live in a moment, mm -hmm. right? They're doing something. It's that moment. And then they're over it while we carry that emotions like client has sent up a Client has said something that have upset her. Other agent has said something that have upset her. We have said something to somebody else and now we are rethinking like, oh my God, I shouldn't have reacted that way. I should have said it differently, right? And then we are ha rehashing it while other person has moved on, like Jesse said. Right. So how do you learn to live in a moment and say, okay, it happened. Let's go to the next thing and keep going. That's my question or, be or better even, do you guys have any techniques, any of you that let's say you are in the moment, right? You have moved on, but the agent on the other side might not have. And you can tell they keep going back. And I don't know if you've ever had that in a negotiation or a transaction where like, they keep bringing up something that happened a week ago. And you're like, oh, we're on that, we move past it. What do you guys do? I basically just tell them straight up. I tell them that train has left the station. Let's keep going. Let's look forward to the destination we're trying to reach at, shall we? Yeah. Straight. I mean, look, it's not about you or me as realtors. It's about our clients, right? And in order to make it a win-win, isn't it important for us to focus on what our clients want instead of you and I? We'll never want to do deals again, but we might have to. And that's something as professionals, we will have to table and we have to keep moving on. I honestly just say that because that is the truth. Yeah, I, I say that and I also add in, like I, I just, um, hit it head on and I say, like, I, obviously this is something that is still bothering you. Let's, what do we need to do to clean this up right now so that we can move on from it? Like, I don't even wanna have another conversation until this is complete with you. 
So what do we need to do for this to be complete so that we can move on and best serve our client? Wow. That, and how do people respond when you say something like that? There, most people don't ever have that question asked to them, so they don't know what to say. Um, but everyone appreciates it. Everyone yeah. appreciates it. We get it. We get it worked out, and then it's done. You know, it just goes back to the whole conversation about people wanting to be heard and understood. Right. And so you're acknowledging by saying that to them that I, I acknowledge and understand that you are having a problem with this. I'm willing to work it out with you. Let's do that right now. I love it. Um, do, do you guys ever take 100% responsibility for anything that's gone wrong, whether it's your fault or not? Well, do if you it's... Know, do you know that one? Uh -huh. And leaders, sometimes we have to take responsibility, right? Um, it's like, uh, you know, the captain of the ship, uh, you know, the captain and captain is ultimately responsible, correct? So sometimes we're captains of our own ship. And it really is ultimately all our own personal responsibility anyway, because, um, you know, we, we can we can react and maneuver into a conversation to, to clear things up. So, so if it's not like, if it's not going the way that you want it to, you have the power to shift it and to, and to make it, to have it go your way just by um, being open, being honest, being authentic, asking questions that leads into a completely new conversation. And in that way it is your responsibility because we all have the power to do that. So I used to do that. And that was completely a cultural thing. Like in India, you're raised, like, you know, be passive, always take responsibility. Even if it's somebody else's fault, you just say sorry. Until I have been put on the spot a couple of times. Like, why do you keep saying sorry? I mean, it wasn't your fault. We are having a discussion. Just sorry doesn't cut it. Now I take a different approach. And if something like that has happened, I usually say, like, you know, we are talking next week and this person brings it up. My son, like, Seems like both of us were having, you know, bad day that day. So I'm sorry for what I said and let's move on. Or I would make a joke. And I have realized humor makes it so much better than just saying sorry and being serious. And that works with me, with clients and with other realtors. So now I take more of a humorous approach. I say, so what, were, what was happening that day? I will tell you like, you know, this was a disaster that day. I'm so sorry that happened. I just had a tequila after we had the conversation and other realtors would just start laughing at it. And I don't even drink that often. So. You know, same, yes. thing, same thing happened to me yesterday, Priyanka. In yeah. fact, this just happened to me with my client. And the day before they wanted to write an offer, we were completely, uh, you know, sold on the property. Uh, actually, the, the agent on the other side rescinded a counter offer because she knew that this is junkie writing the offer. It's a total guarantee. The deal is going to get done. This is the price, da 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 da. Um, long story short, I, my client said, Well, we don't want to submit the offer. And I was, I was so struck at the, at, the, at the fact that they said no, but then uh, I was, uh, I, and, and I even said, You know, this is about my reputation. You guys got to understand that. I am this, this, and this, and I'm a leader in our community. And, you know, this is who I am. You guys know that when it comes to building that relationship with my realtors, with the other realtors in, in, in this, in this area, uh, they know who I am and how I work. And therefore now you're backing out of an offer that is really not right of you guys, especially the fact that you said you were going to write. So how did I change that into, and she came back to me and saying, I don't appreciate you saying this to me. We're all working hard towards one goal and finding the property. And I said, no, I completely understand that. However, you know what? Um, let's table this conversation and talk. This morning, I showed them another property. And I said, you know, I don't know what happened yesterday. And she goes, I, I know. I'm so stressed out about finding a property. I am so sorry about that. And I said, yeah, I had to have a couple of shots mm -hmm. after we talked. Okay. And uh, I had to calm myself down, go meditate, because I don't know what I was thinking. Again, I bought that humor back up and she's like, yeah, you know what? It's okay. Forget about it. And it felt so good. Both of us felt so good about it. Right. Um, it's always, there's a way where we can turn it around and kind of make a joke of it. And I think it depends on our personality because for Jim, being that sincere person comes out so authentic and works so well with me. It's a humor with you. It may be a mix of both. Jesse, what about you? Um, I tend to default to humor, which is a defense mechanism. Uh, 
-hmm. For me, I'm not saying it's for you, but for me, it is. Um, I'm married to a therapist. So that's been pointed out to me probably (laughs) before. I'm just saying. And so I think underneath the humor is typically an authentic, a desire for an authentic engagement, but I either don't know how or don't feel comfortable doing it. And this is why when Jim said what he said, I'm like, wow, that really is powerful. And I could, I could see it. If I said to another Asian, I forget the way you said it, Jim, but you'll have to hear, I'll have to go back and rewatch this or if you can say it again, the framework where you basically said like, what, what did you say? If, if someone's, if, if the real turn side is having a, a bad response, what, what, what did you say to them? You say, um, I'm putting you back on the spot. Yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> oh, it's so good. I'll have to go back and listen to that. I, mean, I, I wanted to memorize it word for word because you, you're right though, but the feeling he created, Priyanka, was it was a feeling of authenticity that if you, the way he delivered that to another agent, if you say it just plain, honestly, right? Hey, oh, yeah. I, I can see that there's something that is blocking us from continuing or something that's really bothering you. Let's that's get this about. out in the open right now and get it fully complete so that we can actually move on from this conversation um, free and clear of all of this. I love it. And by the way, that sounds like a really good objection handler and a listing appointment too. Can you imagine delivering that to a client? If like, they're like, all right, so we're going to get started. They're like, I don't know X, Y, Z. And like, you just go like that. You're like, okay, all right, cool. Let's just lay it out there. Like it just, it's, I think people would probably, people have these like auto responses to things, right? Like something happens, you have this auto response to it, but in an auto, like when you catch somebody, when they're auto responding to you by saying that to them, they don't know what to do. Right. They don't know what to do. They're like, they're like, Oh, oh, I like, I actually have to have a real conversation now. And then, and then this like this magic happens where you are actually in real like human interaction. Yes. And, and I think Priyanka, to answer your question, I would like to do more of that. It is hard for me. And I'm, that's one of these emotional gymnastics. And so like I'm, I'm consciously want to develop that side of it because I've seen the power when it does work, but the humor works and it gets you moving forward, which is sometimes all you need, but it doesn't, depending on what the issue is, I find it doesn't actually resolve the unli- underlying issue. Mm-hmm. So, but sometimes, but like, what, what's the, what's the phrase? True wisdom is knowing when not to say anything. Right. Right. I forget the quote is, but like, not every issue needs to be resolved. There's sometimes when, like, as agents, we get into it with people, and it's like, why? What is the point? Like, let's just move forward. Let's just get this done. I think in those cases, humor works better. And there's you, Jesse. What was that? I have, a, I have a great tool for you in those situations. What's that? Like when you when you find yourself using humor, and you know that you're using humor because you're uncomfortable, say that. Say, like when you when you like when you use humor and you're like oh my god like internally you're like oh my god I just used humor because I'm uncomfortable and I want to connect say that to say that to the person you're talking to like like oh man I just I just said that joke to you because I'm really nervous about actually like dealing with the situation we're dealing with so can we deal with that I love it I love it it's, it's and, like uh, you know it's your it's your hand on your knee uh, the, the anchor right the anchor I love it. And by the way, Priyanka, I'm not saying you use humor as a defense. I'm just saying for me personally. No, right? no, no. I'm not taking it. Yeah. And it may be a defense mechanism, but I will be very uncomfortable saying what Jim is saying. Right. Me too. Why- oh my God. Me too. I would be like, that's why I'm just sitting here going, oh, no. <laughs> my, my anchor is right here. And no, don't. <laughs> I'm like, oh, no, no, no. You know, but. Again, we're all different. That's the beauty of this, right? right. And that's the reason we have this um, webinar and that's the reason why we have this show is because we're all different personalities and Priyanka and I uh, wouldn't agree with Jim, but then of course, there's so much to J- what Jim is saying, right? Um, there's so, so much- Imagine Jim on other side of us, right? So if Jim is talking that way to me, I'm just going to be, wow, what a wonderful person, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, he just won my confidence, right? And negotiation is going to be so much better with him because I will be very comfortable the way he's doing. But I cannot deliver the same speech the same way that he has done. It doesn't work for me. So his method works on me, but his method, I cannot deliver the same way. Right. That's where the personality comes in, like what works for us. So I'm not saying like, that's not going to work from the other side. I'm just saying it's going to work from the other side. I just can't do it my way. So my way is humor. Your way is like you're saying humor may be a defense, but it may be your way. It's like, there's nothing wrong. I love what Jim said. I just can't deliver it. I, I, I love it. All right, so, so before we run out of time, <clears throat> if you're watching this, type in the Facebook comments, or if you're on live here with Zoom with us, type in the box, do you tend to use more humor, more authenticity? I'm curious, t- type in the box. I'm curious to see which, which one people, I'll, I'll, I'll let you guys know what people are tending towards. I uh, would oh, say yeah, I got totally humor. Right. 
from some, let's see, that Krista says humor. Let's see if we get other responses. I mean, it's pretty common in real estate. It's, it is such a nice, easy way to do it. That's why I was, but I love what Jim said. I, I'm, I'm like you guys. I would love to learn to be more authentic like that. Where did you learn that, Jim? Or have you always been that way? No, <laughs> no, no, I ran and hid. No, I, like I ran and hid from, from, from any kind of confrontation or controversy. Like I, I just shut down and ran away. Um, I, it was, it was a lot of work, a lot of self-development to have that come out. Like it took a, it took a while for that to happen. It wasn't an overnight thing for sure. It's, it's practice. It's like anything else. It's, it's a muscle that you have to develop. Um, the authenticity muscle. <laughs> well, there are times when I do the same thing too. I, there, there are times when I um, tend to like figure out, I won't rest until I know, like if, if it's not necessarily with a client, but with my husband, for example, I won't, um, I'll bug him until I kind of resolve the issue because I want to talk about it, mm -hmm. right? I, I, I want to talk about it. And um, he's already left the station. He's already gone, right? He's like, yeah, we don't want to talk about it. We're done. So again, different personalities, right? And and with my clients though, I'll, I'll say, okay, yeah, we've left that station a long time ago. Let's keep moving. But it's different. So it's like my personal life, I'm like that. With my, my professional life, I'm not. That's interesting. Yeah. So what about the letting go part that we were talking about with toddlers and dogs living in the moment and they just let go? Like something happened, they let go and they move on. They move on. And they're always happy, right? So like they throw a tantrum and it's five minutes and then they moved on to the next thing. They're playing, they're laughing, they're singing, whatever right. they're doing. So, and maybe that's where we have to learn, like, you know, letting go part, which is hard, right? Well, here, here's, here's our, uh, our calm in the middle of chaos section, right? So I don't know if you guys know this. So obviously the world of real estate is very chaotic. And I don't know if you know about zebras. Do you know how zebras relax? Have you guys ever heard this? Mm -mm. So my, my wife taught me this years ago. But humans lack at a physiological level the same mechanism, but there are things you can do to kind of fake this. So a zebra, when it's in the plains of Africa and it's about to be attacked by a lion, its body gets flooded with chemicals that allow it to run like really, really fast and like basically flip out and try to get out of it to save its life, right? But when it's done, I mean, that is a very stressful environment for a zebra to run away from a lion. And by the time it's done, what it does is it goes straight still, all its muscles contract and it starts shaking. And it shakes as hard and as fast as it can for about a minute, and then it stops. And then the zebra goes back to being relaxed. And it's physiological. Oh, there's my train. Got to mute myself out. You guys talk. So I guess I guess the analogy of a zebra is something interesting, Jesse. It is. And so you've got this zebra that uh, when it relaxes again, very quickly it goes down. But humans lack this ability to just kind of shake and then relax. So what do you, so Jonky, I know last week we talked about, or two weeks ago we talked about, you meditate. In a transaction, in a situation where you're actually talking to someone, how can you, how do you create that response to someone else? I know we got a few minutes left, let's try to bring it together with this, but like, what do you, what are some things you guys think we could do to create that response in our clients or the other agent to get them to like, have their moment of like shaking and then relax and go back to a, a default state? I think it's the, what you say to them that matters, right? I think that is so important in our businesses, how you say, what you say, and when you say it, right? This is something I learned from my coach. And basically, how do you say it to them? Your tonality will matter. What you say to them, the words that you use, and how you say it to them matters as well, right? So that, for me, is very important. Um, and during the conversation, I always say, listen, I'm not coming from an attack angle. I'm not coming from a judgment angle. I'm just trying to understand you better. So forgive me if I'm not clearing myself up. Forgive me for asking this question. However, da 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 da, -da. I love it. We, we've got a question, by the way, from Krista who asked. Um, so actually, she says it really, really cool. She likes, she says, she says, I say, help me understand, and then walk you through it, which I love that phrase, help me understand. And then, but she had a question, which is, how do you deal with entitled clients? That's a really good one. Oh, boy. Yeah. Jim, you got any secrets? Priyanka, you got any, any tricks yep. for this one? I get many of those, and I appreciate them because that's my personality. Uh, very D, you know, high D, high A personalities. So I give an example of one of my clients who called me and he says like, hey, come and show me this listing that you have. He was 
uh, parked outside. And I was like, nope, it's Sunday. And you didn't even ask me if I'm busy or not. Can't do it. And I put down the phone. He called me back. He said, isn't it your listing you're supposed to show? I said, yeah, but I'm busy right now. I can show it in two and a half hours. And I wasn't that busy. I was doing something. I was just irritated because of that entitlement. Like, you know, I am calling you. Come right now. Um, his wife called me back. He says like, hey, so we are here from Houston. It's an hour drive. We will hang around. We really want to see this. So sure, you can't do a little bit early. And she was really nice about it. I said, sure, like, let me finish what I'm doing. I will see you in an hour. So I go there and I showed them the house, but I had the attitude. He had the attitude. And as we're going around, uh, he said something and he's a surgeon. And we are really good friends now. But at that moment, I was really irritated at him. I said, I won't tell you how to do surgeries and you don't tell me how to do real estate. Mm -hmm. Did it work or did it? Did it did oh it my God, like his face was like, I said it. And after saying, I was like, shit. And then I was not expecting him to be my client. He's somebody who saw my listing, just want to see the listing, doesn't want to deal with the realtors kind of thing. His wife is a lawyer. He's a surgeon. So really high personalities. And she said, Nobody has ever talked to him like that in his life. People worship him. He saves lives. He's a surgeon, nurses, parents, everybody, right? They worship this guy and no one ever talks to him like that. And that's why he can't say anything. And then he said, like, you are the really, really authentic person. I want you to be my realtor. And I do not like realtors. I never wanted a realtor. That's why we were calling just listing agents. But here you go. <laughs> and it's a five-year relationship. They have bought and sold multiple properties with me. And that's an entitled client. But you have to put them in their spot. Like they know. And they have that entitlement. There, there's a reason they have that entitlement attitude. Right. They have achieved things in life. Yeah. Right? So people who are entitled, a lot of time we think like, oh, they're just, you know, they are, or they act like that. But find out what their background is. And you will see they have struggled and they have achieved things in their lives. And that's why they feel entitled. Right. And I think it's so true, Jim and Jesse and Priyanka, when someone is asking you for a commission back, right? They are in, they feel that they're entitled to the money that you earned. And um, when I get that question, I always say, thank you for asking, but you're not entitled to that because this is something that'll come to my family. It's like me asking you for your paycheck and uh, do you like giving your paycheck away? Let me ask you that. I mean, I am straight down to the point with them. And they're like, wow, we've talked to so many different realtors and nobody has said that to us. They're always willing to give. I said, okay, if I, if, if I give away my commission, how good am I gonna be negotiating for you? That means I'm giving away your money too. I, lo I love it. My, my quick tip on entitled people I'd tell you would be, so if you guys are watching this, write this down. Um, you probably already know, dot, dot, dot. Mm. And then you tell them something they obviously don't know. But if you start from coming from the phrase of, you probably already know, this is a really good one for like, like the D, like on the disc test, like high Ds, so your attorneys, your doctors. But if someone's really entitled, you probably already know, but you're not going to get the X, Y, Z when you buy this house, right? It doesn't come with it. Like whatever, like they don't know it, but oh, but that phrase triggers in their mind that they feel like it allows them to save face, but still learn something. It's a really good one. And they, they feel like, oh, yeah, yeah, right. I did know that. I did know that. We didn't know that. <laughs> All right, we got like a, one or two minutes left. Do you want to sum it up? Jim, you got last final thoughts of what we learned from toddlers and real estate. I got my takeaways. I'll tell you my takeaways. What'd you, what's your takeaways from today? Um, my takeaway is having, having the courage to, um, to be authentic. Having the courage to really be authentic, when it, when, even if it means going against what your own personality type is, to meet somebody where they are. Um, that's, that's the best way to serve a client. I love it. And funny enough, you say that because in, in two weeks or in one of these next episodes, one of our possible topics is learning to be authentic. So I love that. Uh, Janky, or what about you? Take away from today? I would say, you know, take, make it a win-win for your client, right? And yourself. Um, I think that is so important. We don't realize that uh, we're always giving but then make it a win-win for you too. It's not about the commission, but it's also about saying no, when to say no. And like Priyanka said, no, I'm not going to, I don't have time for you right now, but I will in an hour. It's the kind of attitude that the wife displayed that then Priyanka was open to like, okay, fine. I'll, I'll, I'll meet with you in an hour. I love it. Priyanka, takeaways from today? Letting go and live in the moment. Yeah. Love it. That, that was mine was living the moment. Just like, from watching dogs or kids 
right? They're so present focused. And I'm not talking about how to trigger that in others, just for myself. Like yeah. if, I, if I could figure out a way to remind myself to live in the moment, I think my life would go a lot better. I mean, life's, my life's not bad. I'm not complaining. I'm saying that that's the biggest challenge for me is living in the moment. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. All right, guys. Hope this was fun. I enjoyed yeah. this. You guys enjoy yeah. this? This is All great. Right. Well, thank you. Yeah. As always. We'll see you guys in two weeks then. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Two weeks. Oh, yes. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye, Bye everybody. Produced by the Agent Collective Media Network.